What can the world or any nation in it hope for if no turning is found on this dread road? The worst to be feared and the best to be expected can be simply stated. The worst is atomic war. The best would be this. A life of perpetual fear and tension. A burden of arms draining the wealth and labor of all peoples. A wasting of strength that defies the American system or the Soviet system or any system to achieve true abundance and happiness for the peoples of this earth. Every gun that is made, every warship launched, Every rocket fired signifies, in the final sense, a theft from those who hunger and are not fed, those who are cold and are not clothed. You've got to have national defense. If you don't have defense, these other countries can come in, we'll be in good like we were in World War II. We'll be flat on our backs. Can we answer a couple questions? About what? We're shooting a documentary, man. We're wondering what you think about um, like nuclear warfare and things like that. I don't think about it much. At all? No. Like Why, Why don't, don't you think about it? Because it doesn't do me any good to think about it. What do you think might happen with it? I mean, you know, whatever happens, happens. There's nothing I can do about it. Скажите, пожалуйста, что вы думаете об What do you think about nuclear weapons, nuclear warfare, atomic bombs? Я не думаю. I don't think about it. I don't want to think about it. I don't know. I use it. <laughs> I can't do it, but I don't have them. You know, I don't, I don't believe in no nuclear weapons. I don't think it's necessary. For what? Well, we've come a long way since the Navy began using these cannonballs. Nowadays, we are more inclined to use missiles such as this Terrier missile, which used to be on one of my ships that I commanded. The uh, number of missiles and nuclear weapons in our naval forces, ground forces, and air forces growing every day. We have about 30,000 nuclear weapons in the United States military forces. The Soviets have about 20,000, total of about 50,000 nuclear weapons and the number in both countries are increasing. Now, when I was the captain of a guided missile cruiser, we had this kind of missile on board, we were fully prepared to use these missiles, even with a nuclear tip in the event of a war. Can you imagine if they use the weapons we have? We'd destroy each other. What's the difference? One superpower destroys and then the other superpower destroys. Probably one destroys a little less, the other a little more, but it is a total destruction anyway. It could happen. It's a real possibility. I mean, it nearly happened with Kennedy and Khrushchev, and it could happen. I don't rule it out. Uh, I like to think leaders are sane enough to keep it from happening. But uh, the history of the species since Tutankhamun suggests it could. But I'm a historian. And I would say that the history of the human race uh, is full of evidence that people have killed each other regularly over the centuries and uh, even millennia uh, of recorded history. They use different weapons. Uh, they killed each other with clubs and rocks, and now we're doing it, doing it with uh, more sophisticated weapons and even thinking about doing it with uh, uh, nuclear missiles. Uh, I think uh, the man in the street ought to be damn well concerned about how to prevent these extremely and uniquely destructive weapons from being used. It cannot be left to the scientists. I think uh, war is too important to be left to the scientists, just as it's too important to be left to the generals. Twenty command to internal. Affirmative. What do you think it could be? How? Okay. Scott Bird, this is drop kick. There will be no authentication. Acknowledged now. 
drop kick out. on the American public is the story that the Soviet Union is ahead of the United States in military nuclear technology. This is just plain nonsense. The U.S. has always been ahead of the Soviet Union in its nuclear weapons technology. At one time, I was deputy director of the Central Intelligence Agency and was responsible for making the evaluations of Soviet missile and nuclear capabilities. A recent head of the CIA has testified that not in one single weapons category have the Soviets demonstrated, demonstrated technological superiority. Furthermore, we have more strategic nuclear weapons than does the Soviet Union. But you would never hear this because the myth of U.S. inferiority is being spread to try and panic the public in the United States. I am aware you will film in a similar auto plan in the United States of America in Detroit. And so I would like to send my greetings to all my American colleagues and wish high productivity achievements. And to all of us, a safe, clear sky above. Yeah, whenever we destroy a nuclear bomb ever fell here, I think it'll just be too bad for everybody here. Probably kill up everybody. And everybody that's not dead, well, we'll probably wish they had from uh, what they call a nuclear fallout. Each of our strategic submarines can destroy 160 Soviet cities. And our new Trident submarines, each one of those will be able to destroy over 240 Soviet cities. No one can say we are not very powerful militarily. Now, it's very difficult and somewhat embarrassing for military men to accept the fact that we have no defense against Soviet missiles, and the Soviets have no defense against our missiles. We can destroy the Soviet Union, even though they destroy us first. There are no winners in a nuclear war. The fact of the matter is that we in the United States Navy can keep firing nuclear weapons at the Soviet Union from our submarines for about three months. So even if the Soviets were able to move their people out of the cities, and I don't think they can, but even if they were, we would lob nuclear shells at the Soviet Union, thousands of them, for at least three months. We keep off of the Soviet Union at all times over 3,000 nuclear weapons right off their coast. The Soviets keep about 150 nuclear weapons off of our coast. Our submarines, which are constantly on station around the Soviet Union with these 3,000 nuclear weapons, are ready at an instant's notice to start this three-month attack. Why do we have nuclear weapons? Well, you have to create jobs, and, for, and that's just another aspect of uh, our job making. It's like artificial shortages of anything else. You create situations for people to work, I think. So, can you stop this for a second? I got Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that I think that any any job is good for the economy. Uh, we need, uh, we need work. Uh, national defense, as we see it today, uh, is, is slipping. Uh, the articles you see in the papers and other news media say that we're losing our uh, advantage over the uh, uh, Russians. And I definitely think that we should have the, that we should have the uh, defense. Russia's got it. And I love this job. As long as the dollar is strong, we have good we have good security. I believe. I think that's the whole basis right now, in uh, in terms of economics. As long as we remain strong economically, we don't have to worry about uh, our defenses as much, because that's our best offense. Spending money does not produce security. The average taxpayer is led to believe that the more money he spends for weapons, the more secure he is. 
but he's not getting more secure. He's actually getting less secure. The taxpayer is being raked off on this deal for the benefit of a very few uh, corporations and individuals. And in the meantime, he's increasing the risk that he's going to be wiped off the face of the earth. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. How to do this? Three and a half million men and women are directly engaged in the defense establishment. We annually spend on military security alone more than the net income of all United States corporations. Now this conjunction of an immense military establishment and a large arms industry is new in the American experience. The total influence, economic, political, even spiritual, is felt in every city, every state house, every office of the federal government. We recognize the imperative need for this development, yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. Our toil, resources, and livelihood are all involved. So is the very structure of our society. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. This Pentagon is a concentration of a great deal of power in our country. Both the Soviet Union and the military in the United States have powerful military forces which exert a great influence within our society. There's some five million people who get a paycheck from the Pentagon every month, and they exert a good deal of influence. There are some two million people who are in defense-related industries that uh, get jobs uh, in the defense plants because of the control here in the Pentagon. Most Americans feel very strongly that we ought to provide for a strong national defense. I surely support that. But only 30% of our military budget goes to defend the United States, 30%. The other 70% of our military budget goes to defend our allies and project our power overseas. Economic studies show that big military budgets cause inflation and contribute to unemployment. People are worried about high taxes, and yet they seem reluctant to criticize the growing military bureaucracy. And we are spending more today in peacetime than we ever spent in war. In other words, it's a chump's game. You can spend all of these additional billions of dollars, and the best you're going to hope for is that you won't be much worse off in terms of national security. And that's true of both sides. That's why arms control is in the interests of both sides. Rather than waste money on neutron and atomic bombs, the money should be spent on improving living conditions, houses, schools, raising the standard of living in peace. Uh, I do believe there are select individuals in the world that do run our world, not our country. And that we, the man, we don't have much of a say uh, because we, none of us group together in one loud voice. We're all kind of like, it'll, we all think it'll never happen. It will happen. General Eisenhower probably understood the nature of war more than any other leader of this age. Human rights, civil rights, women's rights are meaningless before the greatest issue of all, nuclear war and our survival. Asia's crowded, Europe's too old, Africa's far too hot and Canada's too cold. South America stole our name, let's drop the big one, there'll be no one left to blame us. We'll save Australia. Uh, yes, we're with the camera crew. We want to know whether we can come in to do the filming. All right. Who are you here to see, please? Uh, we wanted to see. We made arrangements with Mr. Lane. All right, fine. So please come in, find the visitor's log, and if you'll proceed to the door, Mr. Lane will come and get you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, this is the alternate national warning center, and we're located in the federal regional center, and we're located near Alney, Maryland. We are approximately 30 feet underground in this room at the present time. We use the clocks here, the digital readout clocks, in case of an accidental a missile attack, whether it be one of our own or whether it be an enemy uh, missile launch, 
accidental missile launch to uh, provide the area uh, the time of the uh, expected impact in their local time. Do you think it'll make them feel any better? Well, there are an awful lot of people who don't know about the uh, Greenwich Mean Time or Worldwide Communications Time. And since we are dealing with the civilian population, why well, that is the reason we give it to, to them in their local time. I, I don't know, hardened criminals and accountants, I, you know, who, who lives underground? Nobody lives underground now. Uh, very few people in a city like Los Angeles would survive. Well, uh, I can't see how it would survive, you know, unless there'll be a telephone left hanging off a line or something. I mean, we, we really have made no provisions uh, that I can think of offhand. Currently, U.S. defense preparedness planning calls, expects some 40 to 60 million prompt fatalities after a nuclear explosion. These fatalities will cause a very significant health hazard. Most of them will be located in the northeast corridor between New York and Boston and in Southern California. The present plan to deal with this health hazard is to dig very long trenches with construction equipment to requisition quick lime and to bulldoze the bodies into these trenches, cover them with quick lime and bury them. No attempt will be made to identify these fatalities so that next of kin could be notified. If the time were taken to do this, the health hazard that would be posed would be insurmountable. It's not without interest that 20 years ago, when a committee organized by the president studied the problem of providing health care in the post-attack era, their recommendation simply was to stockpile opium to make it a little easier for people to get over into the other world. That still is our primary response to a nuclear attack, our opium and morphine stockpiles. In every family, two or three or more people were lost. 20 million of us died in the last war. Because let's face it, uh, Russia has if Russia came over, they've got bombs, right? If they took this one A-bomb, uh, I read an article on that. If they took uh, an A-bomb or one that we dropped over in Hiroshima, they dropped in New York, it could kill 5 million people in Manhattan, all right? And debris and that stuff would still be affecting 800 miles around in that circle. So it could kill many, many more. You see what I'm saying? The guy in the street is a smart guy. He knows you can't fight and win a nuclear war. It's only the generals who are um, brought up to fight to think that you can survive. And uh, the answer is the generals might live, but everybody else will be dead. You talk about the end of the, um, of the world if you had a, a, a nuclear exchange. Now that is science fiction bunk. And it's perfectly pro provable by science as to what would really happen. Really, if you count how many casualties would occur on both sides and so forth, that you put the United States in terms of its population population, agriculture, industry, and so forth, back to about somewhere around 1925 to 1932, depending upon uh, what, you, what you think the destruction would be. But that is not the end of the world, and you don't have all of the, you're not going to destroy the world by having a nuclear war. And in the center here, the green and white uh, missile is an ICBM, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, the Minuteman III. It's stored in silos all across the United States. And on the right, over here on the floor, is a Poseidon missile. That one happens to come from the James Madison. Each nuclear submarine, the Polaris type, will carry 16 of these missiles on them. They have a warhead of about five targets in the nose cone. And this one is going to be replaced by the new Trident that's just being built. The Trident uh, submarine will be 555, uh, 560 feet long. It's five feet longer than the Washington Monument is high. It will be capable of carrying 24 of the new Trident uh, missiles on them. They have a much longer range uh, than the uh, uh, Poseidon over here. They will have a range of about 4,000 miles, I think. Now, if you will come over here, I will show you how we launched the men to the moon. I don't think that science and technology should ever be turned against mankind. Very scary. And wars cannot happen today. People are born to live. 
with hope and talent that can benefit others. The Soyuz Apollo link up made me feel good. It's nice to see we can get together. If the technological competition continues, the ICBMs on both sides are going to become at one at the same time both more deadly to the other side's ICBMs and more vulnerable because the other side's ICBMs are becoming more deadly too. Right, now, what kind of a situation could that create? It could create a situation in which either side would feel that it had to strike first because otherwise it would lose its ICBMs and would never be able to strike second so that both sides would have some pressure on them to adopt a launch-on warning policy. And that, of course, means that nuclear war is then resting on hair-trigger decisions by both sides. I had quite a lot to do with this first atom bomb ever exploded on the sands of Alamogordo and then over Nagasaki in Japan. I didn't realize what would happen since then. We now have bombs which are a thousand times more powerful than this bomb. That tens of thousands of nuclear weapons between us and the Soviet Union. And if they ever are used, it will be certainly the end of the world as we know it. But that is a horrible perspective. And while I'm an old man, I don't care really about myself anymore. I have children, I have grandchildren. I want them to live. And what that means, that either we have to learn to live with the Russians, or we and the Russians will die at about the same time, and I'm all for living. I want to say to the American people that they must fight together with us against the atomic bomb for peace. That's all. Under the present U.S. administration, funding for the production of new nuclear warheads has risen 70% to produce warheads for the Trident missile, Minuteman III missiles, air-launched cruise missiles, artillery shells, and other nuclear weapons. If everyone, including military officials, were more conscious of the tremendous destructive potential of nuclear weapons, we might stop worrying about the questions of advantage in the nuclear arms race. If we are to survive on this planet, the arms race must be slowed, stopped, and reversed. And the time to start is now. Thank you. Well, I think uh, that a Russian kid, if he heard me say that, um, uh, do you know any way of stopping bombs? Because if you do, you could tell my mom. I and um, I might ask him a question like, um, uh, does your father um, own a 50 Megaton bomb? Really, if he does, uh, could you tell him to throw it away? If a war ever came, everything will be destroyed. And of course, nothing would become of me. And all I'm hoping for is to dance. If you build up a lot of weapons, then, then you're saying, yes, it's possible to have a nuclear war. It may be okay. Maybe somebody can win a nuclear war. Who can win a nuclear war? No more children, right? That's the end. Right. 
the United States is the most powerful nation in the world. And in the next few months and years, probably the greatest debate in the history of man will be taking place in these buildings to determine whether or not we shall continue to increase our nuclear arsenal or whether we will reach a sensible arms limitation agreement with the Soviet Union. The people of the United States should participate in this historic event. To do so, you need information. For many years, we have been responding to fear. It is now time to respond to reason. Write to me, Admiral LaRock, Box 141, Washington, D.C., 20044. You can make a difference. But above all, the people. I like to believe that the people, in the long run, are going to do more to, pr to uh, promote peace than our governments. Indeed, I think that people want peace so much that uh, one of these days, governments better get out of their way and let them have it.